flooding, environment, Such economic sense. It, it's it, for me, it's kind of common sense that you see the you see the evidence first, you make it available to it. You, you, the, the studies will be independent, they'll be done by independent experts. You, you see what the evidence says, you share it with uh, as wide an audience as possible. These, these studies will be open to, every, to, to the public. Uh, and on, on the basis of that, you make an informed judgment. I think to, to pull the plug now, before we've even seen the arguments that, that are going to come forward on all of these important issues, I just think it, 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 it just would be... Uh, it would be. I think it, I think it would. I think it would not be a sensible way to to look at an important project like this. And you know, I I do think it's important that uh, we we are open and honest with the public. The fact that I'm here this morning with with, with David Ball is, I think, a uh, an indication of the fact that we do want to engage. Um, with, with local residents and we do want to share as much information as we can. I would encourage you to look at the Cabinet report for the 18th of December uh, which is on the Council's website. It's got all the information and more that we've been talking about this evening, uh, this morning and we will continue to engage with, with everybody in an open and transparent way. Thank you. Listen to us! Okay, thank, thank you. Thank, thank, you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. It is 11 o'clock, and I want to give a, I want to give our speakers just a minute each to summarise their Excuse views. Me, let's just, ask, just ask something. He, he turned round and he said we'd be able to look at, on the internet on the 18th after, but they're not holding it for people because my husband and I go well, and well, film. What part of it's in, not in public? It's I think that's confidential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that's the point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Mark, I'm to you. Paul. Yeah, just um, very, very quickly, another project that we've been working on is the Beacon Scheme, uh, which is to convert the old town hall in Hoylake, which we have, uh, into a two-screen cinema, artisan makers' units, and 40 residential units above. Uh, I did say to Phil uh, a couple of weeks ago at a meeting in the town hall that that project will generate £700,000 a year for the council in new homes bonus and council tax revenue, and £4 million over 10 years. So. Honestly, I think the £1 million that you're talking about from the Gulf Resort uh, probably seems a little bit on the low side, I would think, compared to that. Uh, but there's another rabbit that we've got to, to pull out the hat, hat here. Jules, do you want to present this one? Very quickly. Okay, yeah. It is another, very, very quickly. Very quickly. Okay, very quickly, another rabbit. Um, everybody's talking about the need for homes. Um, part of the scheme that we, we showed in the presentation includes the prospect to actually do some redevelopment um, as part of the Car Lane site. So you've got the Element Line site there, which could be used to, for new industrial space, which would generate income for the council. And then in moving industrial units to that site, it would allow you to build more housing. So you could possibly uh, build 100 new residential properties on brownfield sites, which again would generate more income for the council. So you could say that combined with the beacon produces 140 homes and more money for the council. So why aren't we talking about that? To ask again, could you just confirm, David and, and Ms. Davis, um, did you say that the council are going to be lending the venture group the money to carry on with the next stage? Is that how I interpret it correctly? Well, they have no money of their own. <laughs> <laughs> right, to, to be very clear with you, sorry, to be very clear with you, the studies that form the next phase of the project will be funded by the Nicholas Joint Venture Group. They will do... Sorry, just a second. Sorry. Let him answer the question, please. Right. They will be funded by private equity investors in the project. So the council will not be funding any of those studies. They'll be done independently by consultants at the cost of the Nicholas Joint Venture Group. Well, okay, I just wanted to uh, thank you to Margaret for calling this meeting. Um, I think it's very obvious that the vast majority of people are against the resort proposals as they stand, especially building luxury houses on green belt and floodplain. Um, we expect that if Councillor Davis and the Cabinet are serious about representing the people of Wirral, they should refuse to push, rush through this funding strategy on the 18th of December and take some time to pause and think about the alternatives before ploughing on with this resort as they stand, this resort proposals as they stand. Listen to the people! Yes. <laughs> um, I just want to say,
Okay, there's uh, books outside if you want to donate to our campaign. Thank you very much. Right, final, final word. Final word, ladies and gentlemen, is to you, the local MP, to Margaret Greenwood. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thank you, Colin, for chairing this uh, very important important discussion we've had this morning. I'd like to say a big thank you to Karen, to Mark, to David, and to Phil for coming here and speaking today. I think it's been absolutely invaluable. Certainly for me, it's been invaluable because there are so many concerns around the environment, around the green belt, around what it means for the future of Boy Lake. And I think it's massively important that these views are aired and shared. Lots of people have written to me. We are collating all of the questions that people have raised. So, David, you'll be pleased. You'll be receiving a very long email from us. Um, but if anyone has, I'm sure people have outstanding questions uh, from what's been said today. Please do write to me and I will forward those on and make sure we get responses to them. Huge thank you for everyone for coming out. And I think we need to have more conversations. The last thing I'll just do a plug, David, if on the meeting on the 18th of December, whether the suggestions that Mark from Hoylake Village Life has put forward, whether they could also be discussed by the council in that meeting. Yes. Yes. Okay. Right, thank you very much indeed. The hall needs to be prepared for a children's party, apparently, and you're very welcome to stay, but I think it would be far wider. It's a very Christmas to all. Thank you. Thank you.